Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest had a dream where he saw the second revolutionary and civil war. He saw the history of the United States, but not from our perspective, from God's perspective. It was shockingly different. He saw our history, past, present, and future. Interested? <laughs> Rick Joyner, you are known as a man that has prophetic dreams. Uh, you had a dream that resulted in five million books distributed worldwide. It was called The Final Quest. But you had a recent dream that you told me how important this was. Explain. Well, it was so dramatic and so important, the content and the message of the dream. I felt like in some ways my whole life had been a preparation for receiving this dream, for understanding it, and for being able to convey it. In a sentence, what is this? What was the essence of this dream? Well, the, there were some really important factors in it, but one of them was I was able to see our U.S. history from heaven's perspective. And it was very different, radically different. You know, we say there's fake news. Well, there's fake history out there, too, that has been, I think, colored by prejudices, by political opinions and things like that. But this was our U.S. history from heaven's perspective, but also a revelation of God's purpose for our country. Tell me a little bit about the dream. Well, start off, I saw what I call dread champions. These were champions, spiritual champions that are being raised up to go after and pull down strongholds, major strongholds. And I was standing in line with these people thinking, I'm gonna get sent out. And an angel right. came up to me and, and said, come, come with, me. with me, you've got, got a, a different, different assignment. assignment. So I followed him and I went and I was taken from this big device. So it's hard to describe, but on this, on the face of it, I could see our U.S. history from heaven's perspective. And as I moved from left to right, just walking along in front of this, time progressed through the Revolutionary War, through the Civil War. And I knew that if I went all the way to the end of this, I would be able to see how, I would be able to see our own times from heaven's perspective. So I saw things as I was walking in front of it, but my goal was, I want to see where we are now and what does, how, do, how are we seeing now from heaven and heaven's perspective. And you actually saw the future in this dream. That's pretty exciting. To well, I, I, I did see some things. Yeah. Why do you believe God has entrusted you with such powerful end time dreams? Well, you know, almost every one of them, it seems, is going to be really controversial. When he gives me something, I'm not trying to build a ministry. I don't care if it affects that. I don't care. I want to be sure I'm conveying the message accurately. And I've decided I don't care what the message is, I'm going to give it. I asked him a number of times, why do you always give me these real hard words? And that's what he said. He said I was mean enough to to actually share them. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you, you said another thing that was interesting. Yeah. There are going to be some deadly, to the devil that is, intercessors that are raised up. And you were not in that particular line. So in other words, that leads me to believe there are lots of roles in this end time army. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I think these champions, if you will, I think they're the ones that Jude talked about or that are spoken of in the book of Jude, quoting the book of Enoch, that he spoke about the Lord coming with these mighty ones. These are mighty ones. They walk in extraordinary authority. I believe we're going to see a, a number, thousands actually, who are going to be doing the same things Jesus did 
they're going to be walking in an authority I don't think we've seen since the first century. And uh, they're champions, but each one of them had a specific enemy to go after. And they were also told not to just defeat this enemy, they were told to destroy it. So, uh, give me an example of some of these enemies. I think like racism, bigotry. I think the, the whole uh, issue of abortion, of child trafficking, there are things like that that are, you know, uh, many of these things were ultimate issues in our times, but it's what's at the root of them. The, uh, you know, racism is built upon two of the ultimate evils of the human heart, fear or pride. But pride leads to the fall, and even God will resist the proud, but gives his grace to the humble. But that's one of the things, the important issues I think I saw in this dream of the way God or heaven saw our history and our purpose. For example, we thought we won the Revolutionary War, and we won some things. But from heaven's perspective, the main purpose of that war was not getting independence from Britain, but it was to establish a place where there was true, where it was truly believed, demonstrated, and lived that all men are created equal, and there is liberty and justice for all, not just some. You're talking about even in our Constitution, it's, that's the way it was designed, but it certainly didn't play out. No, the Constitution didn't work for some races. It was, you know, it really turned out to be liberty and justice for some. And what I was shown was if we had, if the purpose, if we had gotten on track to fulfill our purpose after the Revolutionary War, there would have been no need for a civil war because there would not have been slavery, could not have been slavery in our country. There could not act, actually even be discrimination here. So we would have not needed the Civil War. And if the Civil War had gone on to some of the ultimate purposes in accomplishing those, there would have been no need for a civil rights movement. They would, we wouldn't have a lot of the discord that is rising again today because these ultimate issues have not been faced and destroyed, not just defeated, but destroyed. Is that why we're going to have this second revolutionary civil war? I think that is one of the main reasons. That um, there are others, but that is one of them. A key word that I saw of our purpose was liberty. We were known as the American Republic, but it was the main thing was liberty and then and justice for all underlining all, but we yeah, You know what I find interesting? This current millennial generation, uh, their major word is we want justice, but the way they're going about it, even though they don't know it because they don't have the gray hair like we do, it's not going to work. Yeah, and it's not justice. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, that's another subject. Uh, the second part of the dream showed where we are now. It showed the second revolutionary civil war was inevitable, right, and successful. What does this really mean? Stay with us. Hello, YouTube Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe, then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. You know, Rick, your dream ended with a strong word from God about this war. What did God say? Well, I saw it written in fiery golden letters. It said, the second American revolution slash civil war is inevitable, it is right, and it will be successful. And then the dream ended. Would it have been possible at a certain <clears throat> point to avoid this second revolutionary civil war? I think so. Um, and this is a question I still have, 
Because up until then, I would have said, yeah, if you don't change your direction, you're going to end up where you're headed. And we are, as a nation, headed for another civil war. But plenty of time to avoid it. Plenty of time for cha mm -hmm. changes and things to get resolved. This changed my thinking. It's, no, it's inevitable. It's not going to happen without this. So now my... Excuse me. Will this occur in your lifetime, in my lifetime, in your lifetime? I believe it will. Now, I wasn't given a date or a timing on it. Mm -hmm. I have a sense, and sometimes you get a sense from these things that because of how dramatic they are that it's imminent, but I do uh, think it is we're, we're moving towards this faster than I would have expected. Even since I had that dream in December, I see things moving, they're picking up pace. Now, you said this war would be in the natural and in the spiritual. Uh, tell me about both. Well, I think the degree to which we win the spiritual war. I think another great awakening is not just, uh, I think it's absolutely essential. And just like the first great awakening is linked to the Revolutionary War, second one to the Civil War, there are things that are going to be illuminated in the what I believe is already beginning, the third great awakening in America. But I believe it's going to illuminate things that can no longer be tolerated in our country. There's, uh, we fall into an ultimate depravity, according to Isaiah, of calling good evil and evil good, honoring the dishonorable and dishonoring the honorable. There's some things like that, that that already we're at the place where there does have to be this resolution. But we also, I think, to the degree that we can win the spiritual war, it can lessen the cost of the war in the natural. Now, what I did see into the future were cities burning. Not all of them, I just saw some. I don't know how that's going to... Did you recognize any of these cities? I, th I, th I didn't recognize them, but I felt like I knew which ones they were. Could you mention a couple? <laughs> <laughs> you know, my first one was Chicago. I felt like Chicago was one. I felt like New York was one. And, uh, and again, you know, to what degree, you know, if we really took on first, you know, Second Chronicles 7, 14, humbled ourselves, prayed, sought his face, repented, sorry, and this comes upon land, we may still have, I think we will still have another revolutionary civil war, but it doesn't have to be that devastating. I think to the degree that that has become a reality in our land with God's people, he says, if my people, and we stand up for the truth the way he's called us to and become defenders. Every one of us is called to be a champion of the faith, a champion for his purposes and his will and his ways. I think it could greatly lessen both the devastation, the casualties, and everything else from the conflict. Uh, how bad was the devastation that you saw? It was really bad. It was... I know a lot of people, you say civil war, they think pitch battles between right. armies. I don't think it's going to be like that at all. I think it's going to be in neighbors against neighbors. It's going to be in some ways much worse than the others. I have to believe when you saw history from heaven's perspective rather than ours, even your, you had a pretty good paradigm of God, but even your paradigm changed. I was profoundly humbled by some of the ways I had viewed history and our history and things. But one thing, too, that but really encouraged me in which I, when I saw that work the end, it will be successful. One of our main ultimate purposes as a nation was liberty because where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And we were supposed to be a special place where the Holy Spirit could do whatever he wanted to do in our land, where he could move, where we were truly solid on the foundation of our Judeo-Christian heritage. And I believe in the, where I believe America is seen in the book of Revelation, it points to our, our roots and our foundational purposes and uh, where... I believe we're going to be. I believe we're going to be a nation 
where the Holy Spirit is especially at home. But we have a destiny, and we haven't touched it yet, I believe. No, we haven't. And, you know, one reason, I know when I shared this with some politicians, where they, they think of, well, the Civil War, they couldn't have fought these battles on these other things. You only have to fight one battle. But their thinking is all political. Somehow we've got to get beyond thinking politically, and we've got to take the leadership. We've got to fight for the truth. So it's not, not just Democrat or Republican. It's the Christian that is going to be in the forefront in this war. I, I think so. I did see a third column. We we'll call it mean? a third column. It's like a whole, it wasn't a third political party. It wasn't political. But it was a major force for influence in our country that drew the best from both sides. I believe that is supposed to be what the church is called to be. All right, okay, so you've got a little bit, just a snippet of this. But the key question now, Rick, is how do we prepare for what's coming next? Call now and get Rick Joyner's revelatory book, Army of the Dawn, and his powerful three-part audio CD set, The Dread Champions. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9605. Rick Joyner's revelatory book, Army of the Dawn, will help prepare you for the greatest event of all time about to take place on planet Earth. You will discover that God has an army that will soon mobilize. Its weapons are not physical, but spiritual. This army will be the most powerful force on earth. This is a call from heaven to be a part of the greatest adventure and the most important cause there will ever be. Are you ready to be a part of God's end time army? In Rick Joyner's three-part audio CD set, The Dread Champions, you will understand what God has downloaded to him concerning the revelatory dream God gave him concerning the future of America. Discover that America will experience a second revolutionary civil war. It will not be a battle between the political left and right, but there will be a third column, the church. It will be successful in placing America back on track to fulfill her destiny and calling as a nation of liberty and justice for all. America was established by God himself to be a nation where all men are created equal. Slavery in America caused us to veer off course. The founding fathers did many things, but they didn't establish God's main purpose for America. That was our past. What Rick has shown concerning our future will shock you. When our government comes to get our guns, the Second Amendment will ignite the revolution. Cities will be burning. Neighbors will fight neighbors. But in the end, God revealed to Rick that America will prevail and fulfill her heavenly calling. We will be a nation who loves diversity and creativity and honors the distinctions that God created our nation to be. Don't miss out on getting Rick Joyner's revelatory book, Army of the Dawn, and his powerful three-part audio CD set, The Dread Champions. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9605. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9605 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Now, and we know what justice is from man's perspective, but what does God believe for justice? Well, one thing he, I believe, is his heart for justice is that he wants all pe people treated fairly. We've got to start seeing from a higher perspective. I don't think we can understand justice as, you know, uh, when you just get down into the weeds of what is te what you can do technically and trying to uh, win cases on technical maneuvering and all, rather than getting back to what is just, what is true, what is right, what is fair in this situation. How do we prepare uh, physically and spiritually for this war? Well, you know, if, you know, in the cases of countries that know they're about to get invaded or something, or there's about to be conflict, what kind of preparation would you do? 
I would be buying food, resources, all kinds of things to defend myself, my family, my, there are things like that. But think, okay, what we would be doing in the natural, apply it to the spiritual too. You know, I want Bibles stored up, Bible studies, and uh, things like that because, you know, we've been, we were down there in the Katrina catastrophe and all that, they didn't have power or anything else. We had a generator, we could have run videos, they would have watched anything we would have put on the screen. We got to look at this as harvest time. And we got to look at it for being able to reach our neighbors and help them. And to me, that means storing extra stuff, thinking not just of ourselves, but being Joseph's storehouse, being uh, there are many ways that I think we need to prepare them natural, but then do the same thing in the spiritual. Give me a couple examples in this spiritual. Well, like I said, I think of Bibles as the weapons of heaven, <laughs> you know, and uh, the truth it can be books, it could be tracts and things like that. Water, food, that's the, the Word of God and the... Um, how, do you, how do you prepare spiritually with your own intimacy with God? Well, I have a resolve that every day I try to get closer. I try to take my thoughts captive. I'm resolved to turn all of my vain imaginations into intercession, where I'm not just wasting my time, wasting my mental energy, and in every way getting to know Him better, getting to know His voice better, being more obedient uh, in every way that I can. But I want to know His ways, not just as acts. And uh, I've been in pursuit, you know. Well, since, what does it mean, I want to know his ways and not just his acts? What do you mean by that? Well, I don't want to just know what he's doing. I want to know why he's doing it. And that's that whole thing of the American history you saw from heaven's perspective. Yeah. Now you know the whys. Right. I, I know some of them. Right. <laughs> I mean, I, that, there is so much more. I was given a glimpse. This whole thing is the most profound thing I remember seeing in any dream like that, but it, I still know it's a glimpse. We all see in part, know in part. I, I believe I've been given access. I can go back to that place and see more, and I will be shown more, but I, I consider all I was shown still just a tiny part. You told me something, and this is amazing, because anyone that understands the United States of America understands the debt we are under, but you told me you saw the end. You told me you saw the debt situation in the United States. What was it like? It was, there's a jubilee coming, and he's going to pay all debts. <laughs> Can you imagine this country being debt free? I am seeing the greatest awakening the world has ever seen. I am seeing the glory of God covering this earth. I am seeing people walking in the same power that Jesus walked in, and even greater. And that means you. <laughs>Next week on It's Supernatural. Hi, I'm Stephanie Skierman. Did you know that dreams are an invitation to hear and partner with heaven's wisdom, knowledge, and revelation? Join me on It's Supernatural with Sid Roth as I teach you how God wants to equip you with wisdom and creativity and most of all, his love to accomplish all you were made for.